Welcome to Opera Out of the Box, unpacking opera piece by piece. I'm your host, Brad Cresswell, and we're taking a deep dive into the world of the musical ragtime during this episode. Joining me here in the studio are James Norman, who is the director of Ragtime, choreographer Dominic Glover of Ragtime, and also on the phone, we have Raquel suarez Gruen, who is playing the part of the mother in Ragtime. So welcome to uh, all three of you. Thank Hello. you, Brad. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Great yeah, to be here. It, it's great because I don't know anything about this musical at all. Oh, so I'm, boy. <laughs> I'm hoping you'll lead me, you'll lead me on a voyage of discovery. Funny uh, that you said voyage. Uh, yeah. Well, Jim, let's start with you. Whose sure. idea was it to bring Ragtime to Toledo? That was mine. Um, Kevin and I, our, our co-artistic director, Kevin Bilsma, Uh, About 18 months ago, we were looking at this season and said, you know, we really need to branch out, as other opera companies have done, uh, into the grand musicals of Broadway. And I made a list of, in the kind of order that I thought we should do them, and this one was at the top, and and Kevin said, absolutely, it's it's got everything that this opera company needs right now, which is great music, it's very operatic in scope, and deals with, you know, issues of race that unfortunately haven't changed from 1902. Yeah. Now, this uh, production team last got together for The Merry Widow, right? That is correct, mm-hmm. yes. That highly successful production last season. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, the conductor, J. Ernest Green, you, of course, Jim, were the uh, director of that show, and Dominique, you were the choreographer. Mm-hmm. I imagine there's a lot more dancing going on in Ragtime than there Actually is. Actually, less. There's less, really? There's actually less. Is there dancing at all in ragtime? Oh, yes. Yes, there is dancing in ragtime. <laughs> I would say the okay. difference between the two, it's like there were three big scenes in Merry Widow, whereas in ragtime, it's kind of sprinkled about. Okay. So you, You'll have to talk a little bit more about that later. But okay. first, let's talk with you, Raquel. Who is the mother? What is, what is this part that you're playing in ragtime? Yeah, so the mother is really, um, she defines and represents the upper class family um, living in New Rochelle. Um, She is your, you know, typical wealthy um, American. And she is, we find out later in this marriage that, um, you know, is is lacking what she was hoping for. Um, And what's really cool about the mother is that She's very progressive in her way of thinking. Um, And the father is very set in his ways, which is maybe a reason why it didn't work out so well for them at the end. But, spoiler alert, um, (laughs) she she takes in Sarah and uh, Cole House's child, um, which at that time was a black, you know, a black baby, and really was open to the idea of, of being kind and... Um, loving and inviting to other cultures, which maybe other, you know, white Americans were not open to at that time. So she was very progressive um, and a very, very open to change, which is really cool. Um, and you see that as she continues within the show, that she keeps growing psychologically, but also discovers herself um in other ways, and ends up falling in love with one of the immigrants. Jim, you agree with that? <laughs> Absolutely. The whole show, Brad, uh, since you don't know Ragtime, is yes. about three ethnic groups in the late Gilded Age in New York. Mm. You've got the whites of New Rochelle, the upper class. You have the blacks of Harlem and jazz. And then you have the Russian immigrants coming from the Lower East Side. And how, you know, based on the E.L. Doctorow book, how those three groups intertwine through not only historical characters, but then made up characters that Dr. O came up with. So, you know, people like Evelyn Nesbitt and Emma Goldman and J.P. Morgan and Henry Ford. There's a lot of characters that are that are in the show that are real built around these fictional characters. Yeah, and Harry Houdini. Don't and forget Harry, Harry Houdini. Houdini, who actually yeah. was here in Toledo at one time mm-hmm. at the Valentine before 1917. So, wow. Yeah. Well, you've kind of given me the, the elevator pitch of uh, the, the, the musical Ragtime. And you mentioned uh, E.L. Doctorow, who wrote the original novel that it's based on, right? In, Correct. In the 1970s, I believe he wrote that I novel. believe so, yes. Yeah, before we dig even deeper, I, I want to get to know 
uh, Dominic and Raquel a little bit better. So maybe you can talk about, you know, introduce yourself to us, Dominic. I'll start with you and tell us a little bit about what you've done. I've got some music for you here. Oh, boy. Let me get that going. <laughs> I love that. Uh, so my name is Dom Glover. <laughs> and... Um, <laughs> I've been a dancer here in the area since about uh, 2010. I'm a Toledo native, uh, moved down to Atlanta for college, and um, once I came back, started performing um, everywhere between, you know, up in, from here to Cleveland, up in Adrian, recently did some work in South Bend, um, eventually got into choreographing and doing more um, production team work. Yeah. So uh, I just I, I love the physicality of dancing and like there's always something to improve upon. And then I love the creation aspect of being on production teams. So when I get to choreograph shows, musicals, operas, whatever, it's it's really fun to dive into whatever styles or however the music feels. Um, so specifically for ragtime, there's a lot of um, jazz components uh, that the uh, the Harlem cast is going to dance through. Uh, there's also a fun mechanical type of piece, and I'll just leave you with that. <laughs> um, mechanical think, type think of Think Henry piece. Ford in the yeah. assembly line. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I get to play and create with some different things. Um, and fortunately, I've actually choreographed this show before, um, so most of the work and the ideas are already there, so I don't have to reinvent anything, but what mm -hmm. I do have to do is find ways to reset it on this cast um, and how it is being staged, which is still a very fun part of the creation process. Now, uh, Jim, I, I imagine that there are super titles for this as well for the Absolutely. English. I've yeah. just finished typing them up. <laughs> <laughs> All 900 and some slides. Wow. That, that's amazing. Uh, all right, uh, Raquel, it's your turn. Yeah. Let me get your music up here. Let me all find. right, I'm ready. I got you a little more. Oh, that's very mother. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a little more mother-themed music. Uh, all right, take it <laughs> very away. Classy. All right. So, um, yes, my name is Raquel Suarez Grown, and I come from both the opera world and the musical theater world. Um, I went to Manhattan School of Music and did my master's in professional studies there in opera and classical music, and really had this idea that I was gonna, you know, just do opera. Um, but then, in a weird twist of fate, I ended up getting an audition for The Phantom of the Opera through my agent. And three years later, because it seems like a phantom, they want to hear you many years in a row. But after three years, I, um, I was cast as Carlotta Giudicelli, which is the, um, the famous opera singer in the show. Um, I was cast uh, for the 30th anniversary and recently closed the Broadway show on... Um, of the Phantom of the Opera at the Majestic Theater that has been running for 35 years. So, um, you know, it was the perfect role of, of being able to mix musical theater and opera. And um, Phantom will live on because I'm going to be doing the world tour coming up. And what's so exciting for me in this role um, is that it's kind of, again, that perfect marriage of um, it's definitely more contemporary vocally than the Phantom of the Opera, of course, but it still has that crossover feel. It has really that feeling of both sides of, of the musical world and the storytelling. Um, and I have to say, not to, you know, I think everybody has beautiful music, but I think the mother has some of the most beautiful music in the show. It's like just, you know, earworm after earworm. Um, and, you know, I also come from immigrant parents, so the story, um, you know, rings very true for me and it's close to home. When I moved uh, to Canada when I was nine years old, our family did not speak English and, you know, had to, to fight to start a business here. And um, I remember being in school and not speaking a word of English. And so, you know, in many ways I can relate to that. And at the same time, I've also you know, lived in New York now for 16 years. So, you know, I've, I've seen the upper, upper class and um, being a part of the opera world got to, you know, get to live in that as well. So um, I'm super excited. I have never done this show before, so this will be my first time. Um, and she's just um, a really special character because she's very progressive for her time, which I love. And I think she has the best 
character arc Absolutely. of all of the yeah. all of all the characters. She really, you can see things change in her life and how she reacts to all of those. Yeah, and one of my favorite yeah. songs from the show is "Back to the Four. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, I, I assume that's a mother song. It is. It is. It's the it is. ten o'clock number. Yeah. Okay. Oh. What does that mean? <laughs> ten o'clock number. When? Uh, well, it used to be the eleven o'clock number when <laughs> Broadway started at eight thirty. But it's the big penultimate number that you know. It's you're on right. the stage all by yourself and you just belt it out yeah, and you solo. know now it's the ten o'clock number because most things start at seven. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Raquel, are you finished with your your story there? I think so. I mean, okay. I can keep talking, but I think that's, that's <laughs> it for now. <laughs> All right. Oh, boy. You get a happy cheer oh. for that. I, I do want to mention <laughs> that the opera is uh, appearing for the first time in front of Toledo audiences. It's April 19th and 21st. That's a Friday at 7.30 p.m. Correct. And a Sunday at 2 o'clock p.m. And uh, you can get your tickets at ToledoOpera.org or call them up at the box office. It's 419-255-7464 or sing. Whose idea was that? I don't know, but we've had it for a few decades. (laughs) Yeah, that's great. So uh, you can get your tickets that way. And uh, Toledo Opera is a sponsor of programs here on WGTE. Now, I want to do the first quiz with you guys. Are we ready? We're ready. You ready, Raquel? (laughs) Yes, I'm ready. Okay, so what I'm going to do, this is called Match the Author to the Musical, okay? So, like this oh, musical, no. <laughs> Ragtime, was based on a book. I have uh, seven different authors here who wrote books that musicals are based on. So I'll read you off the authors, first of all, okay. and then I'm scrambled everything up, and I'll mention a musical, and you tell me which is the author, right? Okay. Here they are. Here we go. Oh, I have some music for this, actually. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's proper quiz music. <laughs> <laughs> Let me say the names of the uh, authors first. Alice Walker, Gregory Maguire, Gaston, Gaston LaRue, Ron Charno. <laughs> Victor Hugo, Charles Dickens, and Roald Dahl. Oh. Okay. And maybe this won't be tragic. Uh, <laughs> no, no. Those are, it, it's all pretty straightforward. Okay. Let's start with the easy quiz. Okay. The uh, first musical is Hamilton. Mm. <laughs> oh, and who was the author? And who was the author? Let's, oh. let's do this like a, a lightning round. So we'll start with you, Dominic. We'll go to Jim. We'll oh, skip I mean, me because I have oh, the answers God. anyway. I mean, and then the we'll go to you right again. Uh, so, <laughs> can, I, can I have a word bank? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Alice Walker, Gregory no. McGuire, no. Casson, uh, Gaston Le- LaRue, no. Ron Cherno. That one. R- Ron Cherno, yes. He wrote the autobiography of Alexander Hamilton. That was right. Which uh, Lin Manuel Miranda based his musical. Very good. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> This is for you, Jim Norman. The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Victor Hugo. Victor Hugo. Excellent. That's correct. See, you guys have this easy. Now it's your <laughs> turn, Raquel. Uh, okay. Th- the Color Purple. Alice Walker. Yes, indeed. Boy, Yay! you guys are great. Okay, this one's a little bit more difficult. Um, Wicked. Who is the author of the original book? That it was inspired by. I I know, and the names that are left. I <laughs> <laughs> it starts with an M. It does, but I don't know. Uh, uh, do you want me to punch in? It, uh, well, so, yeah. Can I phone a friend? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you may phone a friend. I believe it's McGuire. Yes, it that is works. indeed. Gregory McGuire. Bravo. Yes. Okay. Now it's uh, well. I mean, you want to answer this one? Jim? Sure, I can okay. try. It's very easy. Le Miserable. <laughs> oh boy, uh, what are we left with it? Should well, we... it's a n- it's the same thing. I was going to say it should be Hugo. Time. Yeah. Yes. yeah, Victor yeah. Hugo. I was trying to trip you up there. I, I was confused for a, a moment. Bit. How about the Phantom of the Opera? Oh, this is for you, Raquel. Ra- come on, Raquel, no. the of Phantom. Course. All right, Gaston de Luz. <laughs> <laughs> yes, in the French pronunciation, you get to, like an extra bell there. I think if I didn't get that one, I would be disowned by the entire <laughs> of the family's <laughs> <and> opera. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay, only two left. Matilda. Who wrote the oh, story that Matilda is based uh, on? Ro- I can't say it. Roll, roll the doll. How do you say yeah, it? Yeah, roll doll. Yeah. Roll, yeah, that one. Bravo. Very Ooh. well. So far, nobody has missed anything. Yeah. And the last it. one, <laughs> the last one on our quiz is Oliver, who wrote the original Oh, novel. Charles Dickens. Yeah. Yes, Charles Dickens. That was Dominique's, though. Oh, <laughs> oh well, it is, it is Charles Dickens, so. Yes, we'll, we'll give it to you. Now, it's for extra credit... Extra credit. I'm going to give you three choices here. Who wrote the book that Sweeney Todd, the demon barber of Sleep Fleet Street, is based on? Uh, was it A, James Malcolm Reimer and Thomas Peckett Prest? Was it B, Mary Elizabeth Braddon and Wilkie Collins? Or was it C, Charles Dickens? A, B, or C? What do you say, Raquel? Oh, no, C. <laughs> what do you say, Dominic? I'm going to go with B. And what do you say, Jim? I'll go with A. Just okay, well, Jim Norman is the winner. Oh, yay. <laughs> James Malcolm Reimer and Thomas Peckett Press were the authors of the original source of Sweeney Todd. Well, that's pretty good. I mean... Didn't you... know that one was from a book. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Well, there, were, there definitely it was a book. Now, I have another quiz, but we're going to save that for a little later. Okay. <laughs> Let's get back to talking about uh, ragtime. Because this is a really rich, complicated story, I, and you've told some of it, James. I wonder if we can talk about how it relates to modern society. You know, this is set during the Gilded Age. Um, how does the Gilded Age, as represented in ragtime, speak to Toledo audiences or, uh, you know, worldwide audiences today? Who wants to take the lead on that? Um, I can, um, hopefully without getting into like political trouble or anything but it's <laughs> so the show does start um uh, very separated you it, it opens well i'm talking about broadway staging and all that but it opens with um you only seeing the new rochelle which is upper white class from um new rochelle new york and then you see uh the group of harlem uh come in which is predominantly the black cast and then uh, the immigrants enter later. So that first opening scene, there's a lot of um, what's the word I'm looking for? Separation. Uh, sep- separation uh, with them. And then uh, even um, in some productions, you'll see if they are kind of, uh, if people are all over the stage, it's it's looking at those different from yourself um, either in fear or in disgust and then you run back to safety. So the show starts off um, and then even with the scenes, there's just a lot of Separation, And then as we go throughout the show, you start to see all of these worlds kind of swirl and mesh together, um, still with uh, laden with quite a few racist um, things, uh, quite a few discriminatory terms um, throughout the show. And unfortunately, there are still terms that we hear and deal with today. Um, you do see some swirling um, and uh, of, of cultures and some um, meshing, but then you also unfortunately see a lot of people saying, "You don't look like me. You're 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 not of my class. Um, we're very different, so stay away." And uh, that's a thing that you see throughout the show, and unfortunately, still in today's yeah, society. Absolutely, Jim. Do you have anything you want to add to that? Sure. Or? Because of that and the racist language, we have put a. a a PG-13 mm-hmm. for language um, mm-hmm. moniker mm-hmm. on this show, mm-hmm. just so parents know that, you know, I would say probably 13 and up is a, is appropriate, but nothing lower than that. Yeah, yeah. there are there are some words that are going to make you feel uncomfortable, but unfortunately... And they should. And they should. That's, uh, That's the point of it. That. Yeah. yeah. Well, I would urge folks to go to the website where you have an audience guide, mm-hmm. which has a lot of a lot of stuff involved and really helps to uh, explain the, the, I almost said opera, but it's a musical. <laughs> explain that. Hi, um, speaking of musicals, I mean, uh, this has a book also. How much spoken dialogue is there in Red It's, um, you know, on Broadway there are the sung-throughs like Les Miserables that mm-hmm. pretty much doesn't have any dialogue. Um, this is a mixture probably in between like a Hello Dolly, which is considered a book musical where you have a number and then you have scenes and you have a number and you have scenes. Mm-hmm. This is in between that. Um, 
It is mostly sung through. It's interesting. We just got the orchestra scores in, and every, almost every number has segue in one. Yes. Yeah. Segue in one. You know, they couldn't say that enough in different ways, but it's just you move on to the next mm-hmm. to the next piece. And there is a little bit of dialogue, but it's, you know, if there's 30 seconds, maybe a minute of a scene, that's long. Yeah. yeah, it's all just beautiful music. And there's there are very few moments of silence. Like the the orchestra just plays. They, they yeah, play. it's like yeah. the Oscars. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> there's a lot of underscoring under the the dialogue. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Um, Dominique, you want to talk a little bit more about your approach to this choreography in this in this piece? Because I, I assume that you have to go with the music, mm-hmm. uh, obviously. Mm-hmm. And, and are you somebody who is a traditionalist in that sense, or do you try to work against the grain? Or uh, maybe a, what do you mean by traditionalist? Or is well, some it just kind of like taking the music and then making choreography to the music? Yeah, not necessarily. So I and I think most. Um, artists would kind of take this approach I'd take my inspiration from anywhere so for uh, like Jim mentioned the the Henry Ford scene when he's talking about an assembly line I'm like well yes, regardless the mechanical of, yeah dance, regardless right. of the music and it, you you the music kind of has like little tinkering type of like you know uh, hints or whatever you want to call it notes um, throughout the instrument throughout the instrumental uh, part of it so I I focused on that whereas when it comes to the getting ready rack that is fun you know no holds barred jazz music so it's just like okay we need to be wild and have fun and run around the stage and (laughs) you know um for something like uh in act two there's a piece called atlantic city which sounds very like brass band to me Mm -hmm. Um, so, which, by the way, I have a question for you later. Okay. But <laughs> well, don't wait till later. So, Let's hear it now. And what, I think we, we may need props. Um, so, but yeah, it gives like very big brass band, which may, reminds me of like a second line down in New Orleans or um, or a parade. So, um, you know, what I would like to do uh, with props, make it look like a band is playing through a parade and people are watching mm-hmm. that. So the inspiration can come from the feeling the music itself what the uh what what the style actually is raquel are, it. Are, is raquel dancing at all no I'm dancing i'm just kidding no thank god <laughs> it's like no <laughs> I, I, think raquel, like, I don't think so mother <laughs> yeah yes okay she's yeah. not really a dancer <laughs> no <laughs> just the question that i had while you were talking yeah um now jim can you talk a little bit about this production because you're the director obviously what are we going to see so this is going to be a semi-staged um so what that means is the chorus the ensemble which is about 45 strong are going to be seated in chairs uh, in rows in the back and um, there are going to be projections that i'm about two-thirds way done done with um to evoke the different um places that these characters go and the rest of the uh supporting characters and then principal characters do the action downstage. So the only people that are really stationary are the ensemble, and a lot of those are also playing smaller supporting parts, like Henry Ford and, and uh, J.P. Morgan, and J.P. Morgan, and all the the little characters, the reporters or the newsboys, things like that. So they're going to come from the from the ensemble and then come down into the action. So that's that's the semi staged portion of it. Mm-hmm. I want to uh, turn to our second quiz now, if you don't mind. This is called (laughs) a Gilded Quiz. (laughs) Okay. These are questions all about the Gilded Age. Okay. This is is Jim's (laughs) strong suit. (laughs) Raquel, uh, do you know much about the Gilded Age? How how would you uh, judge your ability on this quiz? I'm going to say... Mm, not super high. Not super high. <laughs> yeah, I'm know. with Let's you. See. Okay, well, I've got ten questions see, I here. This, I think Jim's going to take this one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's multiple choice, though, so that makes it a little oh, easier. Okay. Great. Okay. Yeah. Ten questions. Here we go. All right. Who coined the term? Oh, before I forget, I have music for this too. I was just thinking. I was like, Are we going to get music? <laughs> Excellent. Mm-hmm. Okay, here we go. Who coined the term the Gilded Age to describe the late 19th century era of American history? Was it A, Mark Twain, 
Was it B, Andrew Carnegie? Was it C, John D. Rockefeller? A, B, or C? Okay, has anybody got the uh, answer? I believe it's A. <laughs> I believe, I want to say Everybody's A as well. Looking? well uh, yes. Okay, you are correct. Yes, Mark Twain. Yay. Mark Twain coined the term the Gilded Age. Okay, second question. Which industry was the primary driver of economic growth during the Gilded Age? Was it agriculture? Was it manufacturing? Or was it mining? A, B, or C? Any uh, guesses? I think it's C, but... I think it's B. Oh, B? Yeah. Yeah, Jim gets that one. All right. I'm a big fan of the HBO Gilded Age show, (laughs) and I've also gone down a lot of rabbit holes on YouTube about this period. Yeah. Okay. So that was manufacturing. Now... Which book published in 1889 exposed the corruption and injustices of the golden of the Gilded Age in American society? Was it A. The Jungle by Upton Sinclair, B. How the Other Half Lives by Jacob Rees, or C. The Gilded Age: A Tale of Today by Mark Twain and Charles Dudley Warner? A, B, or C. No clue. I have no clue on that one. Yeah, you're B. shrugging your shoulders there. I'm going to give a strong B. <laughs> Try again. Oh, shucks. I'll give a C. A C? <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> the Gilded Age, A Tale of Today. Mark Twain. Of course, it's obvious. Yeah. And this one, <laughs> he called it the Gilded Age, right? Okay. Yeah. Now, here's another terminology. What, what term was used to describe the wealthy industrialists and financiers of the Gilded Age? Was it A, the robber barons? Was it B, the captains of industry? Or was it C, tycoons? A, B, or C? What term was used to describe them? I feel like tycoon will come later. Yeah. Okay, that's a, a good feeling. I want to say A. A? Who said A? I said Dumb. A. Yeah. Yay. That is it. Robber Barons. Robber Barons, definitely. Okay, which labor union founded in 1886 became one of the most prominent organizations advocating for workers' rights during the Gilded Age? Was it A, the American Federation of Labor? Was it B, the Knights of Labor? Knights with a K. And was it C, Industrial Workers of the World? A, B, or C? Is this another <laughs> another guess? I think because I think I've it's been, a. yeah, I think yeah, it's I think a. a as well. You think it's yeah. a? Yeah. <sighs> Unanimously wrong. It was the one you least suspect. It was B. The, the, the knights. knights. The Knights oh. of Labor. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Knights of Labor. Hmm. So I get that one. Okay. <laughs> what, <laughs> what major event in 1890 marked the end of the Western Frontier and the closing of the Gilded Age? Was it the Panic of 1893? Was it the Homestead Strike? Or was it the Census Bureau declaring that there was no longer a frontier line? A, B, or C? It's a little esoteric. But, mm-hmm. you know, give it a shot. That closed? I'm going to guess B. Okay. And, and Raquel, did you say A or did I make that up? No, I didn't say anything. Okay. <laughs> Now's your chance. I'll say A. Okay. I'll say C. Just Who's saying C? I'm saying C. C is correct. Ah. Yes. Oh. You, you hmm. don't even know what C was, do you? It was the, no. you just said the Census Bureau. The Census Bureau, Bureau yeah. No, I'm very like, that good. one sounds. Yeah. yeah. Very, very good. Well, we're about halfway through. Do we, do we keep going or do sure, we? Sure, why not? Oh, no. Okay. Yeah. Which political party emerged during the Gilded Age to challenge the dominance of the Republicans and Democrats advocating for issues like labor rights and monetary reform? Was it the Populist Party? Was it the Progressive Party? Or was it the Socialist Party? A, B, or C? Populist, Progressive, or Socialist? What do you say? B. <laughs> got a 50 50 chance now. C. <laughs> Go for it, Raquel. I'm going to say A. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> the Populist Party. 
Okay, what was the name of the legislation passed in 1890 aimed at breaking up monopolies and promoting fair competition in the marketplace? Was it the Sherman Antitrust Act, the Clayton Antitrust Act, or the Interstate Commerce Act, A, B, or C? I feel like A sounds familiar. Yeah. Yeah, I think okay. it's yep. Unanimous. Right. Yes! Yes, it was the Sherman Antitrust Act. Okay, second to last question. Your penultimate question is, which wealthy industrialist was known for his philosophy of gospel of wealth, arguing that the wealthy had a moral obligation to use their fortunes to benefit society? Was it A, Andrew Carnegie? Was it B, John D. Rockefeller? Or was it C, J.P. Morgan? A, B, or C? I'm going to go with a strong A. A strong A? You all agree? Strong A. Raquel, do you agree with that? Sorry, A was A. Can you give me the, you give me the answer for that the, uh, the choices? Did you know that you were still on the show? <laughs> yes, I was thinking Rockefeller, and then I was like, I don't know if it was A, B, or C. It was Andrew Carnegie. Yeah. The Carnegie Library is all over the, of the country. Ah! Yeah. Nice. So we'll give that to everybody but Raquel. Okay. <laughs> yes, I failed that one. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. There's no, you know, just like there's no rewards, there are no, uh, you know, disadvantages to losing the quiz. Okay, final question. What scandal involving the fraudulent sale of government land in the western United States rocked the administration of President Ulysses S. Grant during the Gilded Age? Was it A, the Credit Mobilier scandal? B, the Whiskey Ring Scandal, or C, the Teapot Dome Scandal, A, B, or C? Whiskey sounds the most American. <laughs> Out of and the one that, that I know is, is the Teapot, so yeah. you're right. <laughs> yeah, definitely the Whiskey Ring Scandal. <laughs> the Whiskey Ring was yeah. a group of distillers who right. would like, bribe government officials so they could get a better deal and make more money. Yeah. In our defense, these were early Gilded Age, and Ragtime takes place in late Gilded Age. Yes. We're going to go with that. Yes. Okay. That's, what, that's what we're going to default to. All right. Well, good to know. So this show has a large cast, a lot of people, in, including the, the character of uh, Cole House Walker mm-hmm. Jr., who is sort of like the Scott Joplin of the... Correct. Of the, yep. Of the Gilded Age. I wonder if you can tell us more about who you have performing. Talk about the singers a little bit. Sure. Um, Derek Davis is coming in to play Cole House Walker Jr. And he was here before in 2018 for our world premiere of I Dream, where he played Martin Luther King Jr. um, and was brilliant. He is Mm -hmm. currently on the national tour of Company playing um, Larry, who is the husband of Joanne, who is the ladies who lunch character so he's her husband that's another musical i don't know at all (laughs) you're not alone on that one yeah we're good but he's uh luckily on the national tour he was able to get an out for our contract which we had signed before so he'll be coming in and scattered throughout our cast uh the father is being played by a former resident artist uh whose name is brendan boyle who was a terrific tenor Um, We also have Harry Houdini, who is a current resident artist, Evan Fleming, and Evelyn Nesbitt, who goes wee a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, I can't do it as high as she can. It's going to be really high. Yeah, that'll be fun. Uh, That's Sarah Mortensen, who's our uh, current um, soprano. John Sook is playing Henry Ford, and Amara Miles is playing the very uh, important role of Sarah, who Mm -hmm. is uh, very pivotal to um, the... last minute of the first act and the whole second act. Yeah. Yeah. The role was originated by Audra McDonald. Who won oh, a yeah, Tony, probably. one of her six. Yeah. yeah. I used to study with the same voice teacher as Audra McDonald and we'd have I'd have her lessons like right before mine, so I would go early and <laughs> stand oh, outside oh, the door sure. and listen. Who would wow. yeah. oh, God. Yeah. I was I was fanboying a little bit. <laughs> Understandably. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So we've talked about the singers a little bit, and it's a huge cast. We haven't talked about the actual music itself, which is by Stephen Flaherty, right? Mm -hmm. With lyrics by Lynn Ahrens. Uh, This is really like the only musical that they've written that has enjoyed this kind of success, you know? Absolutely. This um, premiered in 1996 and played Broadway for, I believe, four years. 
Um, I think it would have played longer, but there was a problem with the production of the producers. Um, and then re- it enjoyed a revival in the middle 2000s that played a respectable run. But it is a, uh, and one of the reasons why Toledo Opera chose it is it is a difficult musical to produce. You really need to have trained singers. And as you said, there is a lot of characters and it's it's a it's a large show. And it's, you know, the subject matter is, is timely and difficult for some communities to to put on and I think it's it's a tribute to our opera company that we're able to tackle it and uh, bring this wonderful story and timely story and absolutely gorgeous music to Toledo I'm going to give that a little cheer (laughs) and I want to say that you know all of our productions in Toledo Opera and I don't know that everyone knows this they are homegrown we put everything together Kevin and I decide on who's going to direct who's going to sing where we get the costumes the sets all of that it is not a tour this is not going on then to Fort Wayne after this is when we're done Raquel goes back and you know goes to Asia to start the fandom tour and Derek goes back to uh, I believe Boston to to join the the company tour it's you know it's all going away and will never be seen again yeah so this is your chance april uh, 19th in the evening at 7 30 p.m and the 21st that's a sunday in the afternoon at two o'clock p.m you can find more information at toledoopera.org or call up the box office at 419-255-SING which is 419-255-7464 if you don't have like the little alphabet assigned to your exactly. <laughs> numbers, yeah. right? If you still have a rotary phone. Of, yes, you know, if you the have Gilded a rotary age. phone. <laughs> Indeed, the early Gilded Age. Exactly. <laughs> well, I want to thank you guys for uh, joining me to talk about uh, this upcoming production of Toledo Opera. Jim Norman, I mean, you've been here before. You'll be here again, I'm sure. Thanks to you, thank you for Brad. coming in and, and making it sound so interesting to a, a musical novice such as myself. Uh, I want to thank our choreographer, Dominic Glover. Yeah, thank you. And uh, also to our phone guest, who plays a part of the mother, Raquel suarez And Thank you for joining yeah. us today. Thank you for having me. You've been listening to Opera Out of the Box, co-production of WGTE Public Media and Toledo Opera, a sponsor of programs on WGTE. You can learn more at their website, toledoopera.org. I'm your host, Brad Cresswell. Thanks for joining us today here on Opera Out of the Box.